Um, first concept on discounted cash flow. I will link to a uh, video. I have more than one tutoring replays. Again, this doesn't lend itself well, uh, this format. So I'll link to a video, but I will uh, make a attempt to explain this to you. Um, the classic example of discounted cash flow. Now, last time this came up in a live stream, and you could put DCF in the search bar. The person who asked this question took me to task for what I'm about to say. In my, you know, what I know, four decade career, uh, sometimes I've had to do math that is very important. And if the math is important, I would hire Lee to do it for me. He's brilliant. Nobody's math is going to be any more pristine than, than Lee's. And the example that a lot of us like to use is I win the lottery. And I call Lee and I say, hey, Lee, I won the lottery. They're offering me a million dollars or $100,000 for 15 years. I know this is a math problem. And so I'd like you to figure out what I should do here. Now, one concept about doing discounted cash flow, because what we're trying to do is figure out what is the present value of $100,000 a year for 15 years. You know, so I can make a decision about whether I want to uh, take the million or take the uh, payments. Uh, and the 100000 this year is certainly going to be worth more than the 100000 15 years from today. So discounted cash flow is a valuation technique. I'll, I'll take it into the market here in just a sec. And uh, Lee calls me. He says, Dean, I've done the DCF, the discounted cash flow. The uh, present value of $100,000 for 15 years is $900,000. Okay, so I take the million. He says, uh, Dean, uh, the present value of $100,000 for 15 years is a million one. I take the payments. You know, net always means the difference. And, you know, net present value is the difference between whatever that present value is, right? So now let's just talk about this as it applies to a bond. So I have a bond. Let's say it's a uh, uh, 7% bond. So that means it's paying me $35 every six months. Uh, let's say it's a 20-year bond, or it should be 10-year bond. So 10 years, $35, I'm going to get 20 payments. How did Dean get the 20 payments? I got the 20 payments because it's 10 years to maturity, and there's two payments a year. So what I'm trying to figure out again is what is the present value of those payments to decide whether I want to pay by this bond or not. Is it fairly valued, overvalued, undervalued? And then I got to figure out what is the present value of $1,000 10 years from today. And so, again, this is given information. It's not can you do this math. It's do you know kind of the inputs and the outputs, right, in terms of what's going on. So uh, let's say the bond is priced at 900 And I get the uh, net present value is uh, 800 That's negative net present value. Why would I want to pay 800 Well, you know, excuse me, positive net present value. Let's say the bond's priced at 900 and the present value uh, is 800. Why would I pay nine, right? It's overvalued. If I find out the present value is 1,000, I can get it for 900, then I would do it. That's called positive net, uh, net present value. So discounted cash flow is the, the valuation technique. Now, we can also do this with a stock. You know, Bank of America pays a 21 cent quarterly dividend. So discounted cash flow as it applies to a stock is called the dividend discount model. And again, we can uh, make the assumption, again, that the 21 cents that Bank of America pays the next quarter is worth more than what it's going to pay 10 years from today. And, uh, you know, I would do a present value calculation, figure out what the current market price of Bank of America is and say, do I want to buy it based on that? It's a valuation technique like uh, PE ratio is a valuation technique, like book value price to book is a valuation technique. These are valuation techniques. Uh, I could also apply it to a stock and assume the dividend's going to grow, and that would be called dividend growth model. 